Black Cowboy, Wild Horses, A True Story by Julius Lester. First Light Bob Lemons rode his horses slowly up the rise. When he reached the top, he stopped at the edge of the bluff. He looked down at the corral where the other boys were beginning to their morning chores, then turned away and stared at the land stretching as wide as love in every direction. The sky was curved as if it were a lap on which the earth lay napping like a curled cat. High above, a hawk was suspended on cold threads of unseen winds. Far, far away, at what looked to be the edge of the world, land and sky kissed. He guided Warrior, his black stallion, slowly down the bluff. When they reached the bottom, the horse reared, eager to run across the vastness of the plains, until he reached forever. Bob smiled and patted him gently on the neck. Easy, easy, he whispered. We'll have time for that, but not yet. He let the horse trot for a while, then slowed him and began peering intently at the ground as if looking for the answer to a question he scarcely understood. It was late afternoon when he saw them, hoof prints of mustangs, the wild horses that lived on the plains. He stopped, dismounted, and walked around carefully until he had seen all the prints. Then he got down on his hands and knees to examine them more closely. Some people learn from books. Bob had been a slave and never learned to read words, but he could look at the ground and read what animals had walked on it, their size and weight, when they had passed by, and where they were going. No one he knew could bring in Mustangs by themselves, but Bob could make horses think he was one of them, because he was. He stood, reached into his saddlebag, took out an apple and gave it to Warrior, who chewed the noisy with noisy enthusiasm. It was a herd of eight mares, a colt and a stallion. They had passed there two days ago. He would see them soon, but he needed to smell the sun, moon, stars and wind before the Mustangs would accept him. The sun went down and the chilly night air came quickly. Bob took the saddle, saddlebag, and blanket off Warrior. He was cold, but could not make it make a fire. The Mustangs would smell the smoke in his clothes from miles away. He draped a thick blanket around himself, then took the cotton sack of dried fruit, beef jerky, and nuts from his saddlebag and ate. When he was done, he lay his head on his saddle and was quickly asleep. Warrior grazed in the tall, sweet grasses. As soon as the sun's round shoulder came over the horizon, Bob awoke. He ate, filled his canteen, and saddling Warrior rode away. All day he followed the tracks without hurrying. Near dusk, clouds appeared piled atop each other like mountains made of fear. Lightning flickered from within them like candle flames shivering in a breeze. Bob heard the faint but distant rumbling of thunder. Suddenly, Lightning vaulted from a cloud to cloud across the curved heavens. Warrior reared, his front hooves pawing as if trying to knock the white streaks of fire from the night sky. Bob raced Warrior to a nearby ravine as the sky exploded sheets of light. And there, in the distance, beneath the ghostly light, Bob saw the herd of mustangs. As if sensing their presence, Warrior rose into the air once again, this time not challenging the heavens, but almost in greeting. Bob thought he saw the Mustang Stallion rise in response as the earth shuddered from the sound of thunder. Then the rain came as hard and stinging as remorse. Quickly, Bob put on his poncho and turning Warrior away from the wind and the rain waited. The storm would soon pass, or it wouldn't. There was nothing to do but wait. Finally, the rain slowed and then stopped. The clouds thin and there high in the sky, the moon appeared as white as grief. Bob slept in the saddle while the warrior grazed on the wet grasses. The sun rose into a clear sky and Bob was, awake, was awake immediately. The storm would have washed away the tracks, but they had been going toward the big river. He would go there and wait. 
By mid-afternoon, he could see the ribbon of river shining in the distance. He stopped, needing only to be close enough to see the horses when they came to drink. Toward evening, he saw a trail of rolling, dusty clouds. In front was the Mustang herd. As it reached water, the stallion slowed and stopped. He looked around, his head raised, nostrils flared, smelling the air. He turned in Bob's direction and sniffed the air again. Bob tensed. Had he come too close too soon? If the stallion smelled anything new, he and the herd would be gone, and Bob would never find them again. The stallion seemed to be looking directly at him. Bob was too far away to be seen, but he did not even blink his eyes, afraid the stallion would hear the sound. Finally, the stallion began drinking and the other horses followed. Bob let his breath out slowly. He had been accepted. The next morning, he crossed the river and picked up the herd's trail. He moved warriors slowly without sound, without dust. Soon he saw them grazing. He stopped. The horses did not notice him. After a while, he moved forward, slowly, quietly. The stallion raised his head. Bob stopped. When the stallion went back to grazing, Bob moved forward again. All day, Bob watched the herd, moving only when it moved, but always coming closer. The Mustangs sensed his presence. They thought he was a horse. So did he. The following morning, Bob and Warrior walked into the herd. The stallion eyed them for a moment. Then, as if to test this newcomer, he led the herd off in a gallop. Bob lay flat across Warrior's back and moved with the herd. If anyone had been watching, they would not have noticed a man among the horses. When the herd set out early the next day, it was moving slowly. If the horses had been going faster, it would not have happened. The colt fell to the ground, as if it had stepped into a hole and broken her leg. Bob and the horses heard the chilling sound of the rattles. Rattlesnakes didn't always give a warning before they struck. Sometimes, when someone or something came too close, they bit with the fury of fear. The horses whinnied and pranced nervously, smelling the snake and death among them. Bob saw the rattler, as beautiful as a necklace, sliding silently through the tall grasses. He made no move to kill it. Everything in nature had the right to protect itself, even when it was afraid. The stallion galloped to the colt. He pushed at her. The colt struggled to get up, but fell to her side, shivering and kicking feebly with her thin legs. Quickly, she was dead. Already vultures circled in the sky. The mustangs milled aimlessly. The colt's mother whinnied, refusing to leave the side of her colt. The stallion wanted to move the herd from there and push the mare with his head. She refused to budge, and he nipped her on the rump. She skittered away. Before she could return to the colt, the stallion bit her again, this time harder. She ran toward the herd. He bit her the third time, and the herd was off. As they galloped away, Bob looked back. The vultures were descending from the sky as gracefully as dusk. It was time to take over the herd. The stallion would not have the heart to fight fiercely, fiercely so soon after the death of the colt. Bob galloped warrior to the front and wheeled around, forcing the stallion to stop quickly. The herd, confused, slowed and stopped also. Bob raised warrior to, warrior to stand high on his back legs, fetlocks pawing and kicking the air. The stallion's eyes open. He snorted and pawed the ground, surprised and uncertain. Bob charged the stallion. Both horses rode on hind legs, teeth bared as they kicked at each other. When they came down, Bob charged warrior at the stallion again, pushing him backward. Bob rushed yet again. The stallion neighed loudly and nipped Warrior on the neck. Warrior snorted angrily, reared, and kicked out with his forelegs, striking the stallion on the nose. Still maintaining his balance, Warrior struck again and again. 
the Mustang stallion cried out in pain. Warrior pushed hard against the stallion. The stallion lost his footing and fell to the earth. Warrior rose, neighed triumphantly, his front legs pawing as if seeking for the rungs on which he could climb a ladder into the sky. The Mustang scrambled to his feet, beaten. He snorted weakly. When Warrior made as if to attack again, the stallion turned, whinnied weakly, and trotted away. Bob was now the herd's leader. But would they follow him? He rode slowly at first, then faster and faster. The Mustangs followed as if being led on ropes. Throughout that day and the next, he rode with the horses. For Bob, there was only the bulging of the horses' dark eyes, the quivering of their flesh, the rippling of muscles, and bending of bones in their bodies. He was now sky, and plains, and grass, and river, and horse. When his food was almost gone, Bob led the horses on one last ride a dark surge of flesh flashing across the plains like black lightning. Toward evening, he led the herd up the steep hillside into the bluff and down the slope toward the big corral. The cowboys heard him coming and opened the corral gate. Bob led the herd, but at the last moment he swerved, warrior aside, and the mustangs flowed into the fenced enclosure. The cowboys leaped and shouted as they quickly closed the gate. Bob rode away from them and back to the bluff. He stopped and stared out into the plains. Warrior reared and whinnied loudly. I know, Bob whispered. I know. Maybe someday. Maybe someday they would ride with the Mustangs, ride to the forever place where land and sky kissed, and then ride on. Maybe someday.